Hello everyone in the EDAP 690 class, the class that Mayer built. We are going to make sure that we're all on the same page with this big assignment. Um, as I said, this is the lift of the class. I want to make sure that you're on, that you're okay with it. And then we're going to jump into module three. We're going to start playing with our first tool that is Animoto. And I will show you how Animoto works. I'm not going to go into a deep dive into Animoto. There's a little video inside of the module here that does a pretty good job. I'm just going to do Animoto through the lens of Mayer. Everything we do from here on out, we'll be looking at it through the lens of Mayer. Um, and I want you to have that in the back of your mind. But before we jump into three, let's go back and look at two one more time. I want to make sure that we're all okay with this. So I'm going to come down here on the left-hand side where it says voice thread for EDAP 690. You can reach it through inside the module as well. There's a link. And this will take you to um, what Blackboard calls a TLI, which is just a application outside the Blackboard space. And as you can see here, it's waiting for me to create that voice thread. Now, let's make sure that we're understanding what we're doing with that voice thread. Now, I should have done that before I jumped in here because it, it's a pain in the rear end to get back out, as you can see. So let me jump back over here. So the idea is, is I want you to do the reading, do the thinking, about all the different that <laughs> about all the different 12 principles of multimedia learning and i want you to do a demonstration of your understanding of the reading um in the videos etc that are in here so let's go back and look at what it says so i'm, I'm asking you to think about creating a voice thread that has one slide that is basically just a title slide with your name on it. Steve Swan's 12 Principles of Mayor's Multimedia. Mayor's Multimedia 12 Principles. Then I'm asking you to define the 12 principles. Notice it doesn't say anywhere here about your own words. There they are. Okay. Examples of the 12 principles in your own words. Now, I've given you uh, information in this module where people will do that. What I'm asking you to do is to read it, think about it, and then think about how the example then would be in your own words. And then the case for each principle. Now, this, one's, this one is where you're really having to th think. Why is it important? that we follow this rule or this principle in our multimedia creation. We're going to come to it here in just a second when we look at the Animoto. And so also down here, I've said to you, this can be a PowerPoint. You can create it, in other words, in PowerPoint or Google Slides, and you can import it. I'll show you how that works. Um, it can be images, screen capture. In other words, it can have just about anything put into it. So let me go back, make sure we're all good. And then I've spent a lot of time uh, talking to you about the fact that the silly um, ultra that I'm using here to, to record these classes, it and the voice thread get into a fight over the microphone. And so the microphone is a choice, doesn't show up. Let me get that out of the way. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add my own. I'm going to create a new voice thread. And the first thing it wants me to do is to start adding the media. Now, I can have done the upfront work and gone ahead and created those 12, 13, if you count the title slide, 13 slides in slides or PowerPoint, either one. And then I can just add it in here. Then what I can do is either in either space, 
In other words, within the PowerPoint or Google Slides, I can add the pictures that go with it. And remember, we talked about this. Just find simple pictures. And I can bring those in. Now, let's stop and think. What does Mayer say about how do we learn best? So now we're jumping back over here. So when we think about it, your voice, your ability to record, is going to help you in helping me understand what you're talking about. That's the power of it. So you don't have to spend a lot of time with text, do you? Remember how Mayer talks about the whole, well, let's go back and look at it. He talks about redundancy. So you're not going to put stuff on the slide that will distract from the narration or the graphics or the on-screen text. We got that one. Thanks, Mayor. Okay, spatial contiguity. We're not going to put words and pictures on the screen that are spread out. Temporal, same thing. We're not going to have a long lapse in time. Segmenting, we're going to make sure that each slide represents one idea of the principle. So on, so on, so on. Modality, people learn better from graphics and narration than from animation and on-screen text. Hello. Look at that one. So in other words, if you put up 13 slides, and the first slide is a text slide that says, Hi, this is my mayor's multimedia principles explanation. Next slide, coherence principle. Maybe it's a picture that you think really nails the idea of coherence picture, uh, principle. And you have your recorded voice explaining the three things you need to do. Definition, how it can be applied, and the case for its use. We don't want to break the morality principle, do we? Okay. Voice principle, obviously you learn better from someone speaking in a normal voice than a robot voice. Well, hey, that's how we're going to do this. So now if I pop back in here and I go to add media, and I'm going to add media from my computer. Now, I'm going to just grab something, okay, and throw it in here. So don't look at this as how I want you to do it well, a little bit. Let's grab Snoopy. Let's go ahead and put Snoopy in here. And the first thing it always does is it always makes sure that it has you save it right out of the box. Okay. Now, having done that, well, we'll, we'll come to the playback options. Okay. So there I go. There's my little guy right here. Notice what I can do. I can edit with a title. My Mayor's Principles by Steve Swan. Save that. Okay. What else can I do? Well, by selecting that, you can see the line comes around the box. And then coming up here to comment, I can now add, oh, look, it's working. Yay! I can now add a comment to my slide. Now, Remember it, when I gave you the weekly preview, one of the things that drives me nuts about the way that VoiceThread works is it doesn't make a delineation between narration and commenting. What we're doing is we are narrating, even though it says commenting. So I'm going to click on this, and it's going to say, do you want me to use a microphone? I'm going to allow it. And now it's recording my voice. And you can see it down here where it says stop recording. And at some point, if I really wanted to, I could go over here and click on the pencils. But I know better because Mayor would say that that would be a redundancy principle problem. But if I did pick a color and then used it 
to point out something, his nose right here. I am, though, now looking at how that the signaling principle is in play. Okay, so I'm going to stop that recording. And now it's uploading it, and I can hear it. Recording my voice. And you can see it down here where it says stop recording. And at some point, if I really wanted to, I could go over here and click on the pencil, but I know better because Mayor would say that that would be a redundancy principle problem. But if I did pick a color and used it to point out something, his nose right here, I am, though, now looking at how that the signaling principle is in play. Okay. So I'm going to stop. All right, I'm going to stop there and save it. And now what it's doing is it's putting it into my slideshow. And over here, the reason why it shows my face there is because that is the creation of all of this. Okay? It's very simple. To create, what would I do to create a new one? Well, basically, all I've got to do now is go and add a new slide. Oh, by the way, I can zoom in, zoom out. I can do all of this kind of stuff. I can close this out, and it throws me right back where I was. So as you can see, it's letting me uh, come back in here to where I can now go and upload something else. Now, let's see. Let me throw a PowerPoint in here. I think I tried using this one. It is so big. It took it forever to come in. Well, let's see if I can find a better one. No, it, it's just not. Um, I can't get out to where my stuff might be living. So let's go back and. I'll go ahead and do it. So now what it's going to do, this is what I'm talking about. If you create it in PowerPoint or Google Slides, what it's going to do is it's literally going to sit here and it's going to throw all the slides that you created in that presentation tool in here as its own individual slide inside of the um, voice thread. So if I made 12 slides, it's going to bring up 12 slides. If I think about it, the slides might look something like the name of a principal with the definition and maybe a small picture that would that I think helps with the understanding of the definition. Watch out for redundancy. Then I can record and fill in the other two aspects of it. That way, I'd have it all in one nice little package. Now, this is going to take forever to bring in because, the, unfortunately, the one I picked is like 14 million slides long. But you know what? How about if we do this? Let me go ahead and kick over. And let's go slides.google.com. And let's create... And I can come in here and I can go Mayor's Coherence Principle. Okay. And Steve already given me a resource that's in here. So I'll go back in here and I will just copy the words. Remember, it's okay to copy the words for the definition. That's not a problem. Okay, so I'm going to copy those words. I'm going to come to my presentation. And I'll put them in. Okay. Fix my letter there. 
slide it around a little bit, make it look nice. Make sure it all shows up. Make sure it all fits on the screen. There we go. Now, if I wanted to, and I have done this ahead of time, I've gone out and found a good picture to put into here, I could add it in here. And you know how to do that. I'm in Google Slides, by the way, which are, are so much like, um, I, I don't really, PowerPoint slides are so alike now. Okay, what would happen if I typed in for a, a search, coherence principle? Hmm. Oh my goodness, look at that. Coherence principle examples. Whoa. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to use one of these because they're too busy. And I know Mayor would be screaming right now going, no, don't do that because it will violate. Okay, I get it. But what if I did just coherence? Let's see what happens if I just put in the word coherence and search for that. Now it's showing me coherence within the idea of waveform. Okay. So I can't necessarily use the, in, the picture for this. But let's go ahead and let's duplicate the slide. And now I'm going to go in here. I'm going to wipe out coherence. And I'm going to go out to where Steve gave me that marvelous uh, tool. So I'm going to put signaling principle now in. Okay. People learn better. Well, I got to get that fixed. So I'll go back to my little cheat sheet Steve gave me. And I'm now going to put in that, uh, those words from the cheat sheet, if I can copy them. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna copy those words. I'm gonna put those into my little slideshow that I've created. And I'm going to, here we go. You get the idea. Now, what I can do, first of all, I need to, there it goes. He grabbed it. And I'm going to go file. And I'm going to download this. Look, I can download it as a Microsoft PowerPoint. Thank you, Google Slides. And when I do that, <clears throat> it's going to put it into my documents folder. I'll save that. Okay. Shall we jump back over to where we were working? Oh, by the way, here's here's <laughs> here is the PowerPoint that it uploaded that has all of the slides from that uh, PowerPoint. Let's go see if we can find though the other one that we just made. Let's go to downloads. There it is. And let's open it. So it's opening it up down here. And again, it's processing it. So let's go ahead and just start killing out some of these other slides that we don't want. Oh, it's here it is. Okay, so now I can open that up. Comment. Boom. So at this point, I have the ability now to come in here and I now can talk. I can put it in my own words, remember what the assignment is. Boy, I'm jumping you around a lot, aren't I? But I hope that you're seeing what I'm trying to get you to see here is how simple this is. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big uh, module. But at the same time, I don't think it's all that difficult for you to do because you are going to take the time. And you're going to help us understand what it is. So you're going to re go in, use either slides or PowerPoint. I like slides because it's easy when I want to do something like this. 
And I'm just going to do copy paste, copy paste, copy paste the definitions of the 12 principles. The examples of the 12 principles, I've read everything that Steve put in here, and I'm now ready to explain them through examples in my own words using the tool to record. And then I'm going to make the case for each of the principles. Why is it important to learning from multimedia that we make sure that we follow these principles? I'm going to put those two things in my recording for each one of my principles. Okay? Simple as that. All righty. Now, once I've done that, It's going to take a little second here because we got a lot of stuff in that voice thread that I just made. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look for my voice thread. Oh, I forgot to save it. Yikes. My bad. I own that. That's all right. I can show it to you again. So here I'm going to go in. I'm going to find my... Mayor Principles Swan. I'm going to save it. There we go. Hi, we're back. I'm going to go into this first one. I'm going to go up here to comment. I'm now going to explain the case for it and example using the recording tool. When I'm finished, And I return. There's my principal right there. Okay. Now it says, how am I going to share this out? Okay. Simple, simple, simple. I'm going to go to share. And I'm going to go to basic. Okay. This is the easiest way to do it. I'm going to copy the link. You don't need to allow people to comment. I'm going to copy the link. And then I'm going to put it in to my PBWorks wiki. And I can put it in my PBWorks wiki using that tool. I copy and paste it in, or I can embed it in. Either way, either way works. Okay. So if I go back here and I look at this, and I look at this, and I go to basic, and if I want to embed it, just as easy as what I just did. Copying the embed code, come back here. I will go and remember the trick I taught you about your works, your Wix wiki pages <laughs> to do the, the enter, 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 the return, the return, all the way down the side of the page. I'm going to insert HTML JavaScript. I'm going to put code in that I just got from my voice thread, allow JavaScript and other potentially unsafe code. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Next, insert the plugin. And then when I go to save it, remember to save it. My voice thread is sitting right there. And then when I go to play it, everything that I've created will just play straight on through. Or I can just click through it. Either way. Cool, huh? Now, the assignment says to take this. In other words, the page that you created. Remember, you create a page called VoiceThread. You're going to take that URL 
and that URL then gets put into the assignments. That's it. Now let's go on to our next assignment we're going to do, which is creating a story of your journey into teaching. We're going to use a tool called Animoto. And so the thing that makes this, what we're going to be talking about from here on out, so interesting is the idea of developing multimedia as a story is as old as sitting around the campfire, swapping stories as a way of educating or as a way of passing on information. When we look at it from the viewpoint of multimedia, it always has a point of view. Your point of view is going to be your point of view of your story into becoming a teacher. We're going to ask you to have a dramatic question. Why did I become a teacher? What was it that brought me into that? The emotional content. Maybe something that happened in your life that made you realize that this is what you needed to do. And the power of the Animoto, and I hope you'll take the time to do this, is the power of the Animoto is the music that you can incorporate into your Animoto that'll lift it up from just um, a staid kind of, well, I started teaching, for me, I started teaching in 1978. It, you know, lift it from that into bringing it into something that is really enthralls us. Economy, and if you stop and think about this through lens through the lens of Mayer, well, we'll do that in just a second here. The music isn't a redundancy principle violation. It actually lends something to the personalization principle. All right. And of course, economy means that we don't, it doesn't run on forever and ever and ever. Well, how long should it last, Steve? We'll talk about it. So I'm going to go to that click of that link that will take me to the Animoto, which I have to click again, even though I tell the Blackboard to open it up. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to create your own free account. It creates a, uh, it puts a watermark on it, but no harm, no foul. Okay. So I'm going to log in. And I'm going to log in with that email that I created it with. And so here we are. First thing it wants you to do is it wants you to, to buy it so to remove that watermark. Don't worry, you'll see the watermark doesn't harm anything. You're going to go up here to the top and you're going to click on create. Now, one of the nice things it does is it realizes um, that based upon your previous things, you're a teacher. Isn't that interesting? So it gives you some templates to play around with. Look at these. There's some in here that you might find interesting. And it does a nice job of kind of filling in the blanks for you. So if you're a little, you know, reticent about going straight in without anything, which would be start from scratch, you can go in here and you can look at how some of these might fit you better. Like look here, they've got templates they call explainers. So this might be a way for you to help someone understand why you went into teaching. Don't worry about the, what it says, real estate and all that. It, you know, you're going to change all that. Uh, here's a motivational one. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and jump in straight in with make my own from scratch. And when I do that, the first thing it's asking me to do is it saying, so what's your theme going to be? What's your background going to look like? And I might want to go with, hmm, let's see. I think and I can look at how it's going to work. So I might look at this and go, which one do I, I want to do? Do I want to do everything it is a clear design and I can make it whatever I want? Do I want to make it look a little prettier? Do I want to do something bold where it jumps out at me? Okay. So I'm going to go just straight up concrete. And I'm going to go that I'm going to allow it to be a 16 by 9 landscape. In other words, it's going to be longer than it is taller. And that's fine. 
and I'm going to choose that style. So now when I do that, it takes me into here where it says, create your first block. So what kind of things can I put in here? Goodness gracious, what can't you put in here? There's lots of stuff. So let's now take a step back and stop and think. If I'm going to be allowed to put in images, then what I have to be thinking about then is what kind of images am I putting in? And if I'm going to use pictures, I probably should have gone ahead and gotten myself organized and put the pictures in or find the pictures first. What was my journey into becoming a teacher? I'm going to go back to the old Google and I'm going to Google the first school that I worked at. And I'm going to ask it to find some images. And here it is. Okay. And this is the old building, the way it looked. So I'm going to grab that one. And I'm going to save that image as field. And of course, where am I going to put it? I'll put it in my downloads. And I'm going to save it. So that's simple. Now I could scroll around in here and look and see if there's anything else in here, but I don't really see anything that I want. You're going to have to work a little bit and figure out what you want to put in and what you're going to leave out. I'm going to go to photo. And it's saying upload the pictures you might want to use. Downloads, there's field. So I'm going to put it in. Now, I don't know why it's giving me that error. Let me try that again. Let's try Snoopy and see what happens if we put Snoopy in. Okay. So he comes in. You know what? I'm looking at my field picture. Ah, uh, I see what happened. So let's go back to field again. And it's not letting me save it as a picture. So I need to click on it. And now I need to come back over here and let's try that again. Shall we save image as you see the JPEG? Let me show you what I'm talking about here. When you go and just do a Google search for an image, and you then try to copy that image, it may or may not make it a JPEG, and it has to be a JPEG before you can use it, or a PNG. So if I now look at that and make sure that it's a JPEG, and I save it as a JPEG, yep, I know it does, overwrite it, so that when I go back into my Animoto and I want to use it, This time, it's going to upload it because it now knows what it is. So I go to field, and I upload it. Okay, now it's just being dumb. I'm not going to fight with it because that was the right kind of file to have in there. Okay, I'm going to close, and I'm going to drag Snoopy in. Now, the nice thing I can do about all this is right here. And this is so mayor. So at this point, I can put all of my slides in. I could put in one slide that might be my text slide that's my title slide. And of course, I'm going to slide that over here. And you can see the effect that it's have on it. That's due to the, to the style that I selected. And if I edit that, 
And if I made a mistake, like right here, I made a mistake on where the uh, I should have made my letter bigger. And it's not letting me. I'm going to close that. It's over here, Steve. Dummy. Okay. And we'll take that out, put that in. Look what you can do. You can make it bigger. You can change the color. You can change the accent color. In other words, the color behind it there. Thank you for that nice tip. Okay. And I can change the color of the text itself. Okay, doke. Simple. Wait a minute, though. What if I want to change how this is coming in here? Is there a way to do that? Well, I tell you, the way to do that is a couple of ways. You can change how long it takes for that to come in. So if I take that up to eight seconds, that's how long my slide's going to take to now pull in the... Um, text that's here. So you're going to put in pictures. You're going to put in text. You can record your voice talking about a slide. Here I am all dressed up and ready to go to school for the first time. Little did I know that my experiences as a student in school would form the reason for why I went into teaching. Little did I know as a student that I would become a teacher because of what I experienced as a student. Okay, forgot to hold it down. Now I can hear what I said. Little did I know as a student that I would become a teacher Okay, now you heard that music in the background, and that's the final piece. You are not stuck with whatever music they put in here. You can see right here, that was the music that was playing behind my slide. When I go up here to music, I can change it, and oh my goodness, this is where it just blows your mind. This has so much music in it. If what you're doing is you want just to have a simple background, remember Mayor's Redundancy Principle, that doesn't distract, go take a look at either Electronica or Instrumental. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because this is where you spend the time listening to music. <laughs> That's the one I'll pick because I like the way it sounds. Okay. Now to preview it, and you should always preview it as you're going along. Let's hear what we got. You can see the watermark down there in the lower right. It really doesn't take anything away from it. And so it automatically drops the music level down and brings up my level of narration. Isn't that great? Okay. So we're done. Everything looks good. I'm happy with it. I'm now going to um, actually produce this. So if I click on preview, it gives me the choice of producing it. It wants a title. My journey. I'm just going to call it that. Put your name on it. My journey. 
Steve. Okay. I'm having trouble with capitalizing J's tonight. Right. Producer name, I could put my name in here. If I want to. Don't have to. And then I'm going to finish. It only gives you one choice of the video quality. And now I can take a look at it. Okay, so as you can see, I now have a way to get it out of here two different ways. Here's our old friend. So now I'm going to create a new page and I'm going to call it, I can call it a couple of things. I can call it my journey. Hey, I got it capitalized. My journey into teaching. Or I could call it module three, my journey into teaching. Or I can come in here to my edit. And I can do module three right here. Now, when I go back to my Animoto, I can do it one of two ways. I can take the link and put it in there, but I think putting the embed code in makes it look really cool. So I'm going to grab the embed code. I'm going to come back to my PB works. I'm going to insert that JavaScript thing again. I'm going to paste in my embed code that I just got. I'm going to go next and I'm going to do a insert plugin. And then when I save it, there it is. Simple as that. Isn't that nice? Now, the question is, how long, Steve, does this need to last? Well, here's the nice thing about it. Animoto will run your video as long as your music lasts. So if you want your video to last more than a minute, but then let's think about the digital storytelling economy. Let's make sure that we're not droning on and on and on. So to me, more than a minute, minute and a half is all you really need. And then for our assignment, all I'm going to do is highlight the URL at the top of the page of my PB Works Wiki. I'm going to copy that. I got to do that silly jump again. And now I'm back into here. But this is okay because now I'm in the right place. I'm going to go to assignments and I'm going to come down to creating a story of your journey into teaching. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to write the submission and I'm going to paste in that URL. And we know because it's blue and underlined that it's a, it's a link that I will look at. That's all there is to it. Okay? Wow, we did a lot of things tonight. I think I'm comfortable now. I'm more comfortable now with um, our understandings about our voice thread. And the coolness about it being that basically we're making 13 slides we have one slide as a title slide. The other 12 slides you can make either in Google Slides or in um, PowerPoint. I like Google Slides or I told you why. And then each slide then we will put in by using the cheat sheet that Steve gave us. 
There they are. And that's in our module. And we're just basically copy and pasting in the information that we have here. But then we're adding our narration, which is explaining in our own words and giving examples. There you go. How it fits and why is it important to multimedia learning. That's all. And all the resources to do that are in the module. Just go and read. When we're finished with that, we are going to go and share it out. We're going to go to basic. We're going to grab that embed code and we're going to paste it over into our PBWorks wiki. And then our Animoto tonight. Have fun. I really like Animoto. I think it's one of the coolest things that's out there. As always, if you have any comments, concerns, questions, if you need me to set up a, a personal CoLab Ultra meeting with you to go over anything I've just done tonight, be glad to do it. I also hope that you realize that we're moving through things here from here on out rather quickly. But I also think that I do that for your benefit because we can get done quickly with the course. As always, 502-457-2937. If you have a concern or a question, do not hesitate to reach out to me with anything that you have a concern or question about. See you next Wednesday.